Hi guys, this is a heat pump water heater that I've been working on for the last little while. I'll go through the operation and then give you a demonstration on how it works. Uh, this heater is for heating potable hot water, not for space heating. And it works basically by circulating water from the water tank inside to this outside unit through some pipes. Uh, right now I've just got it hooked up to a tank of water for testing. Uh, it flows through a heat, uh, water to refrigerant heat exchanger where the uh, heat from the refrigerant is dissipated into the water and the water is circulated back to the uh, water tank. Uh, there's a pump right here to circulate the water. Uh, inside this foam uh, block there's a coil of there's two concentric tubes. Uh, the outer one has uh, water flowing through it. It's about this size, quarter inch. Uh, that size, sorry. And there's a 3 8 inch in a refrigerant tube running down the center of it. That's about, uh, I think it's eight meters long. Uh, yeah, the water flows up through this tube, through, around in a circle, and then goes back to the tank. Um, I'll go through the refrigerant circuit. Starting from the compressor discharge, goes straight into the uh, condenser. It goes through, it gets condensed, comes out uh, bottom here, around a little loop, through a uh, sight glass and into the receiver which stores up any extra refrigerant. From the receiver there's an overpressure switch on the output goes through a filter, filter dryer, then to the uh, thermostatic expansion valve then to the um, evaporator. That's just the condensing coil out of an old uh, window air conditioner. I've modified it so that the refrigerant goes up through all three tubes in parallel instead of through one, because I don't believe that it would work particularly well when there's liquid boiling off in there, if there's just one tube going all the way through, staking through. Um, comes back up, you know, I'll recombine. The TXV um, bulb is under this insulator. Another sight glass on the uh, suction side. A pressure regulator to um, prevent the compressor suction from getting too high pressure when the outside ambient air is very hot. Say if it was 35 degrees outside, the uh, suction pressure would be way too high for the compressor and it would be overloaded. I've got a um, pressure gauge so you can see what's going on on the low side and then the suction goes back to the uh, compressor. The fan is a uh, modified radiator fan. I've removed the 12 volt DC motor and put a uh, motor from uh, the fan and an air con of an air conditioner in it because I needed a 120 volt motor not a 12 volt one. Um, over on this side there's a uh, control box, a transformer to power it and a little circuit I built using a PIC microcontroller. It look takes the input signal for heat re uh, heat request. It looks at the um, ambient air temperature with a sensor over here. Uh, it also looks at the evaporator temperature with this sensor and using that information it determines whether or not to run the heat pump or whether to enable the resistance heaters in the water tank inside if it's too cold outside for the heat pump to run. And also when it's cold outside it turns this pump on for about 30 seconds every hour to avoid the uh, tubes freezing up. Okay, I'm ready to start it up and give a demo of it operating. This is a transformer to get 24 volts to command it to turn on. Let's plug that in. There we go. Fan is running. Liquid, liquid being sucked through the suction line. It'll clear out soon. Currently at about 35 degrees Celsius in the water. In the water. I was running it a bit earlier. Fluctuating a little bit or jittering a bit. Quite cool already. That's starting to clear out now. Also, bubbles going through that. Discharge, liquid discharge. Gauge stabilizing now. Uh, 
capacitors. I've got an extra capacitor parallel with the um, original one through a PTC to turn it off once the device is started. I found that it's, for some reason this has trouble starting at high at, uh, after it's been running for a while at high temperature, and this helps uh, helps a bit. It takes a few minutes for this uh, the liquid line, the suction line, uh, to clear out for some reason, but after about five or ten minutes, it's all uh, dry in this uh, sight glass. And the temperature is starting to go up, half a degree already. I'm not sure how it is in other parts of the world, but here electricity is quite cheap uh, and gas is relatively expensive. So this heat pump is, would be about one half to one third the cost of heating hot water uh, with gas. So it would definitely save a lot of money. One thing I like about this uh, radiator fan is that it's quite quiet while it still blows a lot of air, which is good because this thing is outside near the neighbor's house. It will be outside. Oh, we've got a full degree now. Anyway, I should have more videos later on uh, once this is installed. I'll show you how it looks. Thanks for watching. One thing I forgot to mention is I'm using, in this uh, system, I'm using the refrigerant R290, which is a refrigerant that is a slightly lower uh, operating pressure than R22, which is needed because the uh, condensing pressure in this system uh, would be too high with R22 due to the uh, high condensing temperature of around 60 or 70 degrees Celsius, which is much higher than you'd normally run in an air conditioner. So the R22, uh, or R290, runs at just, uh, just the right amount lower so that the condensing pressure in this system is about the same as it was in the stock air conditioner. That temperature is going up quite quickly now. And also the suction sight glass is cleared mostly out now. There's still a bit of liquid there. That will uh, dissipate or go away after it runs for a few more minutes. This one, this one still has some bubbles in it.